Hey guys, JKK here. Today I will show you some more Cassandra games. But I will like to focus on the control matchups. To start with Modernam Taru, which I think is one of one of the hardest matchups for Cassandra as uh, Damiria style also because they have four stone shields so even if you play World Inquisitor they can uh, simply wait out this turn and you have only 24 creatures in this deck so with access to four uh, frozen wave, four insect swarms and three ice meteors it's quite easy for them to actually wipe your whole deck at least that would happen to me previously when I played with versus Mother Namtaru. So let's see what I can do here. If I don't draw the early construction or at least like more campfires and if I have all the situational end game cards it's hard to rush him so I choose to maybe play for like mid game and sneak some damage in mid game because I have those martyrs now on hand so I know that in mid game I will maybe have a window if he didn't draw a stone shield and that's why I will block here and I figured if he would play geyser I have anael so that's why I didn't move this guy he is playing my version of Namtaru that I posted on forums and in my Cassandra I uh, did more changes not much but I uh, replaced the Windborn speed the spell that gives swift I put it out of the deck and put Alter of Asha instead. It's better against those control decks because uh, when they play uh, that much stall, like stone shields, you need to have access to more Dwarding Inquisitors and Alter of Asha can give you that. Also bridges. So two bridges, two mortars, one Alter of Asha and two Warding Inquisitors usually should be enough to have uh, good matchups versus those control style decks unless they super luck out with stone shields to give the stone shield the perfect timing now I attack here because I have an L on hand so that I planned to play her next turn And I return to play on only two Rise of the N N Nethermancer and two Knight of the Rising Moon to not help those style decks. And ri Knight, Rise, Knight of the Rising Moon is uh, not as good now when I replace Windborn Speed with Alter of Asha, so I choose to play only two instead of three. And in case of Nice uh, rise of the Nethermancer. I don't want uh, my opponent to be able to banish my Ward Inquisitors from grave because I plan uh, I play Alter of Asha mostly for that because I have blinding lights to um, to push for damage. I don't need Alter of Asha for that. So then someone could ask why don't play free warding inquisitors uh, uh, alter of asha is better because of purge if they purge uh, your ward inquisitors you still have access to them from the grave also it's cheaper and uh, more versatile because you can 
deal that final damage when you need to and you don't have more blinding lights on hand. That's why I only play free blinding lights now and uh, I have less spells. Three blinding lights, three storm rages and two uh, martyrs. I really like martyrs now. Uh, I wasn't so sure ab about them at first, but now I really like them. They are winning me very much, much matchups, Mo more matchups than uh, windborne speed. So if I I am choose to play one of those because playing windborne speed, martyr, altar of Asha, it's lot of situational cards that really uh, weaken your early game stability. Now I play those campfires because I thought I can play Martyr but it requires free magic and now I thinking about this and I would actually remove this but I don't want to remove any of these Martyrs because I think they are so crucial. So I pass on that and I will just play one card here to not blown up to not be blown up by uh, Ice Meteor. So just attack with this, move this here and barrack here and I am playing around Ice Meteor that way. And now I draw this guy, so I even prefer that to Martyr now. slightly wrong order of attacking but doesn't matter now Here I just plan for that uh, martyr, but then he draw this event, which he did not activate in right order. <laughs> and here epic finish with warding inquisitor. If he did activate it, I would be in bad shape but I still could deal some damage with him and also play those constructions and I have still one martyr left, altar of Arsha, some work and bridges so maybe I could stall for some longer now I will show you the Damiria replay against the same player Keep this hand because a lot of constructions and if I figure this is Taldamiria, the barracks are must have on the starting hand. Without them you have no chance, so you need to play them and then hope for warding inquisitors. And him to have not all the stone shields on hand. So now just play one construction, skip the campfire, play that with the dragon crystal next to me we have free resource uh, so I will so I could play another one 
And soon after that I could play the third one plus campfire plus a two drop. And I draw second campfire which is good and allow me to play. I could play now the two constructions but I wouldn't be able to kill bloater and I wanted to play bloater uh, to kill bloater. I could play maybe 3 plus uh, Thief Collector with 4 campfires. But I choose for some aggression now. I, s I figure that 2 is good enough at that stage. And I just want to use that campfire for mar more tempo. Against uh, stall decks like Damira and Namtaru uh, is usually correct play to just stack them and use the quick attack option on them. Plus uh, they are good against tho those board clears like Frozen Wave, Insect Swarm and Arcade's Wrath. Also one thing to consider against Staldex I probably should play two uh, two barracks on front and only one barrack on the back lane because th in this deck is uh, probably more me uh, more shooter options to play especially when you want to focus on chaining ward inquisitors and front lane is mostly Weak cards like Thief Collectors and only strong card is Free Drop, Crusader, but rest is like this guy. A Squire and Thief Collectors. And they die quite easily, so that's why the shooter line is more clogged up in this deck. So when you have uh, like no particular reason to play those barracks in backline to protect them and in when you play against Stal you probably have nothing to protect them from so it's maybe better to play the two of them up front and only one in the back row I would say he doesn't need two empowered spells right now. Oh, he doesn't use this in a, in a way. And first, Warting Inquisitor comes on board. So the shield comes into play and Garant's purge on Warding Inquisitor 
he doesn't know how much oh, I have of them, but still, what else could he do? Alter Avasha is in my hand. Now, as I have good resource, I just replay it with Broken Bridge. So now he needs to draw stone shield or, or he cannot block this damage. And yet no stone shield. One more chance. And there is stone shield. He should uh, be using Knight of the Rising Moon way sooner, uh, using it more aggressively. Now he lucked out with this stone shield, but it shouldn't be the case if he used it three times uh, before, and he could he could discard this um, empowered spell. He doesn't need three of them on hand. Usually one is good enough against this deck. One empowered spell. Now look how much cards left in the deck. Now either final stone shield on one more broken bridge and he draws the bridge and that enables him to move back some guys to hand now I still have some options to replay Ward Inquisitor and I don't want him to play Empowered Spell next turn to kill both of them so I push back one of on hand the one that is on the barrack and I play this instead now Here I could do one more damage if I use event, but then I wouldn't be able to play this. Golden Horseshoe and Zephyria. And there is the combo, Empowered Spell plus Arcade's Wrath. And I still have one more Ward Inquisitor. And here is the choice I could maybe make, is wait till I get my second bridge to play this Ward Inquisitor when I have also access to the final bridge to replay it after because he cannot have uh, 5 stone shields and now if he has stone shield I am kinda screwed because I don't have option to replay him next turn to protect from the board wipe And he draw the stone shield again.
but he would be able to remove this broken bridge with that if he plan to if he uh, choose to use that later after I play War the Inquisitor and now I didn't draw any fortune so I cannot even use my event and now I and now I draw the broken bridge just one turn too late if I and he also draw this top deck if I uh, if I draw this broken bridge turn and rear he wouldn't be able to block all the damage on with only two bloaters and now I cannot do anything this broken bridge does not save me anymore and I have only one barrack and few creatures maybe less than 10 in my deck so he can easily clear them and no way for me to win and I will also show the replay against Mukao This is another control deck, but doesn't have access to stone shields. It's less stylish. It's not style deck like Namtaru and Namiria. It's, it's just control deck. It doesn't have stone shields. It has a lot of cheap attackers and board, board wipes in form of ice meteors and geysers and stuff like that. But still, what Inquisitor should be helpful in that matchup. Now, I, I, also interesting fact, I could play the Dragon Crystal first turn to play the one Griffin Crossbone, but it is only one attack creature. So I waited with to the next turn, so I can play Dragon Crystal into two campfires, into construction, into Griffin Crossbowmen and already pump more tokens on barracks and make that turn bigger as if I used the dragon crystal before I could only play another griffin crossbowman that turn so I would have 206 here instead of barrack plus this guy and then I would have less those guys to pump barracks because I would have to play construction turn 3 and also nothing more that turn so in this deck it's sometimes uh, actually good to keep your golden horseshoe to play uh, your big turn 3 or something instead of playing it inst uh, instantly on turn, turn 1 wise spears on hand kinda inefficient resource wise but still can do the job and no gazer yet but if he draw it next turn he can he can play it and this is kinda dangerous formation for me but I need to play this strong line with barracks when in he is trying to double block also. He 
Here I attacked because I thought if uh, he attacked with both of them to kill it, then I can use the uh, barrack to kill the coral priestess. But instead of doing that, he will play two of Ice Spears, which is kinda inefficient for him. As he has two more, two drops, maybe he would be better off playing those two drops. But since it is better to play two drops, even when Ice, Ice Spear would do perfect job like now, maybe it's no, it's no good to play Ice Spear at the beginning in your deck. Maybe just one copy instead of two. It's just so inefficient to play four resource to do a job Firebolt could do for one resource. So, yet as he was still on f only free magic, and I know he hasn't uh, geysers on hand because he would play it earlier, then I still wait with my warding inquisitor on hand till he will be able to play ice meteors, and then I will protect having free barracks on board already. So in this turn, I could uh, I have two course of actions. Action now. Firstly, I could play uh, Thief Collector and Warding Inquisitor. And the second option is what I choose after some consideration is to play two Stone Rages to kill this entire four creatures. But it's kind of on both option would be equally good and viable uh, to play because if I play Thief Collector plus, war plus Ward Inquisitor I would set up for the next turn to kill them with Storm Rage and to do some damage and he had only spells left on hand But that play also saved me from Ice Meteor as I didn't add anything to the board, so Ice Meteor is not, not a good play now. But he definitely should use the Soul Liver now on this. This is such a strange play to use four resources like that instead of just killing this guy. And now I can play some guys plus plus Ward Inquisitor. And all hands denied. Just can play this Ice Pierce plus plus this one creature. He thought he can target this guy to play the event plus two Ice Pierce to kill off this guy. 
probably, but that wouldn't work anyway because he cannot be targeted. So here I just play another one at Inquisitor and it doesn't matter uh, the order I play because this is still uh, enemy spell warded but if I would play this first or Thief Collector then the token would spawn here and I wouldn't be able to play Ward Inquisitor on that place so that's why I choose to play it like that. Here probably I should just stay and attack because it's same. What's the difference if I blow, uh, protect this guy or this guy? Both are shooters. Now these Coral Priestess cannot do anything because if he move this guy here then he cannot also kill it because he is protected. But at least he is not on the barrack. And I actually have nothing on the barrack to grow now. Now here I maybe do a strange choice, maybe I should just uh, attack with this guy and deal two, two damage to him instead. Because now I plan to broken bridge him and this will also give him that back. So it's not that good. But my board looks really strong now. Also I should probably move this guy here and then spawn these two tokens there because he would be protected with this and this wouldn't be dead. But at now, no, at that point, I cannot uh, no longer play enemy spell ward. I could probably do the same job actually with martyr. As he actually he could steal maybe that guy with entral, but he doesn't even have the magic for that. I have no idea why he didn't up it already to five. because he draws so much of this 
Kabuki Seduk Tres, I cannot deal much damage that turn. I just try to deal some damage. And I know I cannot be protected for the next turn. So that will be tough for me. And now he leaves me in very tough situation because I am not able to finish him that turn yet. And uh, even if I would use the Zephyria in order to deal that two more damage, then even if I double block that lane, I still cannot actually protect from ice meteors and trash, so rivers and stuff like that. And as I cannot uh, kill it w without uh, blinding likes or storm rage, actually storm rage would be super good for me. So I choose. So I need to do that. That was my only option to survive. And maybe I could uh, deal damage to hero here instead, but I didn't want to take any chances and just double block that lane with warding inquisitor. And now he has only spells on hand. So that play kinda saved me here. If I did anything else than that I would lose because even simple double block would hel wouldn't help. The only option was to play uh, the World Inquisitor again with, uh, with Zephyria putting him back on hand. So that would be it for today. Thanks for watching guys.